I'm Mark Hallen, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Unless you're running a fish only with live rock tank, you're going to need to be concerned with other tank parameters besides just nitrates and phosphates and salinity. Why? Because if you're not running a fish only tank, you're running a reef tank, and that's a reef tank with corals, and corals need building blocks to grow. Those building blocks are what we're going to be talking about in this episode. When I'm wanting to grow corals and therefore run a reef tank, I'm still concerned about nitrates, phosphates, and salinity. However, I'm then going to be concerned about alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. Now before I dive into that alkalinity, calcium, magnesium mix, let's talk about testing. Because if you're dosing something, you want to be testing for it, and some hobbyists get mixed up around testing. It's like, ooh, the nasty T word. Here's the thing about testing. I don't see it as a burden for me having a saltwater tank. It's something that takes me five minutes and I do it a couple times a week and it's enjoyable. It's like, do you have a car and complain that you have to put gas in your car because it takes three to five minutes to gas it up? No, you complain that you sometimes have to wash your car? I hope not. Testing shouldn't be a burden. It helps you have insights into your tank and it helps you know that everything is going along quite well. And here's the really fun part. When you start to identify trends in your tank and things like calcium and alkalinity start to drop, that means your coral is growing, which is a positive feedback loop for you. You're like, ooh, I think the corals are growing, but I can see my calcium and my alkalinity dropping. This means I'm doing the right thing and I'm starting to get down this road of called success. Who wouldn't want that? So when you hear the word testing, don't get all messed up about it. If you like it like me, great. But if you're like, eh, look, it's your friend, do it a couple times a week, and then when you test, write your results down. Don't just think that you're gonna remember it or test and be like, hey, I, I did what Mr. Saltwater Tank said, I tested. Test, write down your results so you have a log. We wanna be able to start spotting trends. You wanna be able to have something to go back to to see if something went wrong, whether tank parameters correlated with that. You don't know if you don't write these things down. I said alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium are the building blocks of coral. So let's jump into each of them so that you understand them more. Calcium. Calcium is used by hard corals to build their calcium carbonate skeletons. Coralline algae also uses calcium and even soft corals use a small amount of it. Low calcium levels, under 360 parts per million, make it difficult for hard corals to build their skeletons. So you wanna make sure you're keeping your calcium levels between 380 and 500 parts per million. That extra 20 parts per million on the bottom of the range are there for a safety factor. There are plenty of calcium test kits on the market, and when I'm not automating my calcium testing with my Neptune Systems Trident, I'm using the NIOS Calcium Test Kit. Alkalinity. Alkalinity isn't an element or a compound. It's a measurement of the amount of acid required to reduce pH to 4.5. Now that probably doesn't mean much to most of you, so here's a more practical way to look at alkalinity. Knowing your tank's alkalinity is a substitute for knowing how much bicarbonate is in your tank's water. More bicarbonate means faster coral growth. Testing for bicarbonate isn't easy, and it's much easier to measure alkalinity, so we use alkalinity instead. It's generally accepted that alkalinity is the most important tank parameter, and for the most part, I agree with that. But just because I think alkalinity is the most important tank parameter, that doesn't mean I'm forgetting about everything else. I'm still testing for calcium, I'm still testing for magnesium, and I'm still testing for nutrients. So yes, pay attention to alkalinity, but not at the expense of all the other tank elements and nutrients. For alkalinity, I'm looking for a measurement of 6.5 to 10 dKH. That's the range that works for me. My Neptune Systems Trident automatically tests alkalinity for me. When I'm not using a Trident, I'm using Hannah's Alkalinity Checker or Marine Master Checker. All right, so what about magnesium? Well, magnesium is uptaken by corals, but its main role is to inhibit the formation of calcium carbonate crystals in your tank. So at any given moment, calcium carbonate is trying to precipitate out of your tank. If it did that, it would look like snow, it would get piled up on your pumps, on your corals, it wouldn't look good. So magnesium's job is to take this calcium carbonate crystal and create a wrap around it so it can't form. Think of it this way. Here's a nice festive Christmas tree decoration. On each one of these branches, that's a place where calcium carbonate crystal could form. Magnesium comes along, wraps up this Christmas tree. There's no more branches exposed, so crystal cannot form anymore. So that's magnesium's role. What am I looking for in terms of parameters for magnesium? I'm looking for this. For magnesium, I'm looking for a measurement of 1,250 to 1,500 parts per million. 
my Neptun Systems Trident automatically tests for magnesium. When I'm not using a Trident, I'm using NIOS Magnesium Test Kit. As you start having success with corals and your tank starts to mature, you're going to need to add more calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium to your tank. How do you do that? There are a couple of different ways to do it, and I'm going to talk about all those methods in the next episode. I'm Mark Cowan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank mm -hmm. you.